Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square. Welcome to our live webinar today on March the 6th of 2022. So I can see from the chat that there are people here from all over the earth and I want to say welcome to you no matter what time of the day or night it might be. Now today in our Square in a Square quilt trunk show, we're going to show small quilts. Now there is a difference between a miniature quilt and a small quilt. And the quilt world has actually, you can look it up, actually has different uh, distinctive characteristics of that quilt. And it will either fall into the miniature category or a small quilt um, category. Now a small quilt can be just about anything from 24 inches up to about 50 inches. So that's what we're gonna look at today. And we will do another trunk show uh, maybe next month, maybe in a couple of weeks, and it will be strictly on miniature quilts. Now, miniature quilts are much more um, policed than small quilts. A miniature quilt must be under 24 inches, and it has to be a replica of a large quilt. Not that you have a large quilt and you make a miniature quilt of it, but that it has to have the same number of pieces in a block. So let's say that you were going to do a bear paw and you were normally in a normal quilt do like a 12 inch block. And there's in a bear paw, I think there's, oh, I don't remember how many pieces are in there. Let's just say 50 pieces are in a bear paw block. So if you're going to make a true miniature bear paw, the block doesn't really matter what size the block is, it would have to have the same number of pieces in it. And if the quilt has like 12 blocks or six blocks, then your miniature would need to have that many blocks in it too. So it needs to, a miniature quilt is really a replica of a large quilt and it has to be under 24 inches. So uh, pretty tiny pieces. And lots of times people think, oh, I'll do a, um, smaller version of something thinking that you can get it made quicker but something that is smaller is just as difficult as something that is um, larger um, it um, actually these medium size um, units that you use for a quilt are actually the easiest you have more leeway or more fudge room or what I call human element more human element room if you're going to make a miniature or if you're really make big ones then your human element shows up more so that means you have uh, more availability um, for it to not turn out the way you want it to turn out so uh, stick with what we call the small quilts and more of the normal and average sizes and you will be able to make more allowances for those errors or those human elements okay so I kind of struggled through that sorry about that um, but a miniature quilt is very distinctive in certain characteristics that it much must have so the quilts we have today are going to be between 25 and 50 inches in size and most of the units are going to be average size so any of these are going to be very easy to make and of course everything we do is with the square in a square system now I'm sure there are some of you that are new to the square in a square system you jumped on here to see a trunk show but I'm going to quickly give you a demo of the square in a square system and that's how we make every quilt so when we refer to a quilt being easy but you see all of these triangle pieces in it and you may be thinking that they are small. The one behind me is actually um, a small king size quilt, but the pieces are very small. But with the square to square system, it allows you to be human, to not always be perfect, but you're still going to get some really nice piecing and be able to um, tackle quilts that maybe normally you would have shied away from. So let's look down here at the demo table and let's make just a couple of the most simple options for the square and a square system. So every quilt we make, no matter what color, no matter what size, and no matter what triangle unit we need, we're going to start out with what we call a basic square. It's a square in the middle with strips around on the side. Now, of course, your sizes can change, your colors change, and they do that as, as you go in and make all of the different quilts. But everything starts out just like this with a basic square. This is your square in a square ruler, 
And when you, this is the one that we call original. We've got some other ones that we'll talk about here um, shortly. But if you're just new to the system, you're just getting started, you want to start out with this original ruler. And it comes with a book called Quick and Easy. And as we go through the quilts, if you don't have a pencil and paper, I have um, almost 30 quilts to show you. So make sure you get a pencil and paper so that I can tell you where you can find this pattern and if there's a video to go along with it or any of that, okay? So this is the original ruler. This is how it comes packaged. And it comes with this quick and easy book in here. So there's, um, I think, six quilts, five of the options, and 21 different block sizes in here. So this is a great book to get started with. But we will refer to our reference book and I'll tell you about it here shortly. So when you look at your original ruler over on the right side of it, and it doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, just turn the ruler to cut with your left hand if you're a lefty, and turn the ruler, cut with a right if you're right-handed. So it's no difference. So when you look to the right side of the ruler, there's a 90 right here. And the first set of lines right here where they come together and touch, that's the 90. And the 90 is actually the arc that goes in between those two lines because they touch. So these, uh, what I call ripple lines that come off of each side of the 90, those uh, fall off the edge of the ruler. So um, I call them 45 because that they don't touch. If they touch, then they make the 90, okay? So we're gonna put the tip of the 90 right there where those lines come together and touch. We're gonna push it right into the corner or the tip of this inside fabric square. Right here where the seams are at, we want the first set of lines to line up right over the seam, and it'll do it on each side of the 90. And then we have this grid line right here that shoots through and goes right through that bottom corner. So here I'm talking, I always talk about push your 90 into the corner. So push it into the corner of your square, line up that grid line with the opposite corner, see how well your seams are, line it up right over the seam. And when I cut right here, this is a perfect fourth of an inch off of this point. So you can see how the human has done the cutting and the sewing and the pressing of this fabric. But now you're gonna come in here with the ruler and trim it up on all four corners. And you're going to get what we call an option one. And as I go around, I also look where I've already cut to make sure that I'm staying as nice as and square um, as possible. So here you can see all four corners. This is what we call option one, and it is the square and a square. And that's why the system is called square and a square, because everything starts out just like this with your basic square, and then the different ways you trim it up, you get different triangle units, and this one is option one. So normally when you make this block, the square in a square, you have to cut a perfect square and then cut perfect triangles. And then you have to find the perfect middle of this perfect triangle and match it up to the perfect middle of this perfect square that you cut. And then sew a perfect fourth of an inch seam and repeat that for all four sides. And then if you've done all that perfect as a human, then you're gonna get that nice perfect fourth of an inch seam allowance. But with the square and a square system, we can just sew these up very, very quickly. And when we come in to trim, we're gonna get that perfect fourth of an inch, even if we weren't perfect when we did our cutting or our sewing or our pressing, okay? So that's the option one. And we're gonna go ahead and jump over here to the Christmas quilt. This little quilt here is all made from option ones. So just like you saw me trim this option one from the basic square, all of these are option ones. So let's look at a row. Let's just pick any row. So here you can see in this row of our Christmas tree, you see an option one, an option one, an option one, an option one, an option one. Now the colors for the center changed and the colors for the strips changed. All four sides stayed the same color. We didn't mix up the color on the strips when we put it around and that made our row here. Now I also want you to look at the outside edge, not only of this row, but of the other rows because this is an option one also. So here you can see the square in the middle. We put red strips on two sides, 
We put the same background color on the other two. It's still an option one. I don't know how well you can see the seams right here, but it's still an option one. We just switched up our colors. So as you get to these nice outside edges here, they're still option ones, square in the middle, red on two sides, background on two sides. So you're still, so what that means is that when you're sewing your rows together, all your units are the same and it makes it very easy and very simple to put together. And then when you stack the rows up on top of each other, then you have this beautiful uh, Christmas tree. And this Christmas tree in this size is actually a free pattern on our website. Just go to squareinasquare.com and you can have the, the pattern and get started um, with your ruler and have a beautiful little quilt. Now, another thing that I love about this little Christmas tree is if in the center of each one of these, you have 25. So you can do this as a um, advent calendar in the 25 day countdown to Christmas. So what you would do is you would take a ribbon and tack the middle of the ribbon right into the middle of the square. And uh, each day you can get a little charm or a little Christmas ornament thread it on that ribbon, tighten a little bow, and decorate your tree. And it's a great thing to do if you've got little kids or grandkids too. And down here at the bottom, you can see these beautiful little packages that we put along the bottom. And these are just option three flying geese. And that's gonna be the next one we make. So let's jump over here to our demo table and let's make a, a flying goose. Now on the very first one, option one, you know we trimmed leaving a fourth of an inch on all four corners. Now to make our flying geese, we're going to have to trim a fourth of an inch on two opposite, but we're gonna go right up to the tip. We're not gonna have this fourth of an inch trim on the other two because we're gonna cut it in half and get our two perfect flying geese. So let's trim our 90. Let's trim those two 90s first, and those have to be on opposite sides. So we're just going to flip it and do the two opposite sides. Then on the other two sides, we're going to go right up to the tip. Now, when we started today, I talked about these ripple lines that come off. So we're going to put the 90 in there, and then we're going to step over two ripple lines. We call it the Texas two-step because we're stepping over two. And it doesn't matter if you go to the left or to the right of the 90. So here's our 90 put in there just like we've done on everything. And I'm just gonna slide it over one, two, and I want the tip of the line to be right there in the tip of the square. And when you go to that tip, you have a new grid line that shoots through and goes through that other point. Check where you've already cut to make sure you're staying as nice and square as possible and give it a trim. Now see, it's nice and sharp it does not have that fourth of an inch. Now don't worry, our seam allowance is included and our points will be exactly where we want them to be. Now where you've trimmed it nice and sharp right up to the tip, that's where you're just gonna take your ruler and just go right through that sharp point. I like to use my grid lines to make sure I'm staying square and cut it in half and there's my two perfect flying geese. So if I wanted to make a star, you're going to see a lot of stars today. You can put four of them together or traditional flying geese, one going right after the other. Now, when you come in here and you sew a fourth of an inch here and a fourth of an inch here, here's your point right here exactly where it needs to be. So when you trim doing the two step, you're actually moving the point and creating a seam allowance in here where you didn't have one before in just your option one. You didn't need it, and so you didn't have it. But since we're going to cut it in half, we have to do the two-step. Now, basic, basically, you have learned everything that you need to know about the system. Everything else I'm going to show you is a version of what you see here. So even though we have 41 options, that means 41 different triangle units all starting out just like this with a basic square. The trimming is just in a different order and how many times you sew around. So it really makes it very easy and very simple to do. Now I'm gonna trim one more for you and we're gonna do half square triangles on this one. So because we're cutting through the block, 
all four directions, not just one. We're going to two-step all four corners. So I'm just going to two-step it, trim it sharp on all four corners. And make sure you're staying as square as possible, so really look where you've already cut to make sure your outside is staying square. And if you ever have to choose the um, inside lines or the outside lines, once you start making your cut, the most important part is the outside. Of course, your seam allowance and the outside edge. Okay, so here we've gone right up to the tip on all four corners. And now we're just going to come in here and cut right through the middle, one direction. Be careful for it not to move. Don't let your fabric move. Turn your mat or get a rotating mat or something. And cut through the other direction. And I have four perfect half square triangles. I have no dog ears to trim off. Everything is square and flush and neat and nice. I didn't have a lot of prep to get ready for them. And now they're ready to go into any quilt that I want to make. So if I want to do a bear paw, then I'm just going to sew them together like this and have a small square and a big square. If I want a, a pinwheel, then I just sew them together like this for my pinwheel. And that's option four, half square triangles. So these are the main units um, of the, the square options. And then we also have diamond options, and we'll look at some of those at the end today. So now that you know how easy these are to make, let's go back over to our quilts, and they're gonna become much easier to make when you look at them, knowing how we make them, than the traditional way of piecing, putting, cutting out triangles and trying to sew them together and then squaring them up or, or whatever. So this next one here um, is just a small quilt. It's not um, a pattern that I have. It's actually a friendship quilt. And um, there's some different names over here of different friends. When, we, when I moved from Kansas to Texas over 20 years ago, our little sewing group uh, made the quilt. So it's just a nine patch in the middle and three strips like a split rail and then you've got room for different names and signatures in the block. Now we're going to talk a little bit about color today as we look at the quilts. If there's something that I really want you to see that has to do with color then I'll point it out. Now on this one the blocks, very simple blocks, but they put them on point. So if you put a block on point that means you have these side triangles and these corner triangles. And notice how those were done in a darker color. So it actually creates a frame and becomes part of a border and part of the inside part of the quilt. And then the red check is on here because red check is the one piece of fabric that you can never run out of and one of my favorites. This next one is Americana, and these are a three inch star, and then we have a strata of strips, and there's four. So once again, let's look at a row of how it's put together. Because this quilt is so very simple, no matter what size you're making. Now it comes from the Americana pattern, and the Americana pattern looks like this. And it has two completed quilt patterns in it. So one that is this size with the three inch star and then another one that is a six. But it has eight additional sizes in here. So you can make your star a three inch, a four inch, a five inch, a six, a seven and eight, a nine, a 10 inch, an 11 or a 12 inch. And all of those different sizes are included here in your pattern. So if you decide you want a different size of star than what we have in the two patterns, you can still follow along with how you construct the quilt, but you'll go to the other size that you're looking for. So you get a lot more than just um, what I'm going to say a simple pattern. So this one is the three inch, and you can see it here. 
and you can see the little flying geese. Now the little flying geese and little stars like this is what I fell in love with in quilting um, 40 years ago. And these were not easy to make. And actually I came up with what you see today as a square and a square system so that I could get flying geese and make beautiful little stars just like this. Now in this color combo, uh, the colors are very uh, distinct between each other. There's a very definite light and dark. The light is all the same. And when I work with scrap quilts, I like to do what I call organized scrap quilts. And usually for an organized scrap quilt, I will keep all of the background the same. That way the um, colors in the quilt don't get too busy. And of course I kept everything in the star blue. I kept the, tr the traditional red, white, and blue in this particular one. Now on the, the large quilt here behind me, I want you to notice that it is exactly the same as the little red, white, and blue one that I showed you. This one took me about 18 months. I always have a scrap quilt that I'm working on. So as I work on projects, I know that when I have leftover scraps that I can cut them into certain sizes of strips or squares and they will go into the scrap quilt that I'm working on or they go into a different section. But I always have a scrap quilt I'm working on. And when I'm maybe in between projects or I want something that's just kind of relaxed, then I go to my project that is my scrap quilt. They're always what I call simple quilts, brainless quilts, mindless quilts, uh, projects that you can just set down and work on. Now the strata of strips are one and a fourth. That means it sews down to three-fourths of an inch. Now you really can't go very much smaller than that or everything is behind the quilt in the seams. So one thing if you think about making a large quilt in a smaller size, you need to remember that you've got a lot of seams close together which means you have a lot of fabric on the back. So this quilt is very, very heavy because it's like you've got a layer of fabric behind the top um, that adds a lot of weight to it because you have small pieces and a lot of seams. And you can see how that my backgrounds were different. I did try to keep a good contrast between the colors so that the stars and stripes would show up, but my backgrounds are a lot of different colors and my stars are a lot of different um, colors. So a great way to use up small pieces or small strips or small stratas. And I, like I said, I love stars, so I, I have a lot of star quilts, and I, have, I love this Americana, and so I, I have done it in lots of different colors. So let's check this one out. So this one here, we kept it with the black and kind of the gold color. All of the star centers are the same, a little black check. All of the strata of strips are either the black uh, words or the, the black um, tone on tone and the background is the little gold star or the the words and then the the two different blocks I used were for the points that we used to go around now we also have this one that is kind of a lighter one and you can notice when you use it for your points that it gives the stars kind of that twinkle look because you see the dark parts of the stars popping up before that um, little black flag one on here. This one I really love and even though it's just the black and gold notice how I did a flange right here in the border and it's red so it gave it just a little pop of color with that red flange in the border. And a um, all of this was either my Abe Lincoln fabric or my Pony Express fabric which was out in um, around 09. And then here you can see the bigger star piece on the back. Now the next one is the same. It's the Americana in the three inch size. Very scrappy. And you know when you put strata of strips together and you cut them out for the length that you want them to be, you're going to have some little pieces left over. So notice how I did uh, those little pieces in the smaller squares and that was an added border that went all the way around. So I really like to look at my quilts. I like to make them and I like to go back in and grab all of my little pieces or scraps to help decide what I want to do with the border. Now I think all of this is the Abe Lincoln fabric. It all comes from the Abe Lincoln fabric. 
and but notice in this one how the background was all the same and it's kind of a it's a light but it would be what I would call a dark light because it reacts as a darker than um, just a true light now because the background was a little bit darker look how it allowed me to go in and actually use a light color for the points on some of these stars. And if my background had been light, then I could not have used uh, these fabrics in, in the quilt. This next one is called Double Star, and it comes from one of our individual patterns like this. Um, and it has lots of different sizes in it. So it has this size as the smaller one, which once again is the three inch star here. So that means it's a three inch option one. So notice how that's the option one. So just like this option one that we made, that's how we got these. And then the star, and those are just sewn in rows and alternate pieces. And when you get that put together, look how you have the red star going around the black star so that's why it's called double star and in the pattern you have an additional eight sizes for a total of 10 sizes so just like we showed on the americana there are additional sizes that you can make your quilt and this one is called double star we have any questions uh, nope. I don't think so. not yet you have any questions? Someone said they love the added border. Uh, um, probably on the Americana, on the Americana, that little added border. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And we use the black and butter check on the back. The, the camera doesn't always like the checks. The pixels don't always work well. But in real life, the checks are great to use in your quilt and on the back. I love putting the check on the back of a quilt. And all of these are um, that you've seen so far are my fabrics that I've had at different times. So make sure you go into the website and check out all of the different fabrics that we have and sign up for our email list so that when we do have a sale or we get um, a new production line in on our fabrics, then you'll know about it and can jump in on the specials that we have. Squareinasquare.com. All right, let's look at this one down here. This one is a bear paw pattern. And so we've used the option four half square triangles to make the points. Once again, it's a scrappy one. The blocks, the background are all consistent for all of the blocks. And we put it on point and therefore it allows you to have a nice solid unit here in the middle. And notice how we went a little bit darker. This is kind of like an, um, a, uh, old quilt or an antique quilt they would have uh, different colors in here than what they would have um, in the block if I had used this fabric here then the blue bear paw would just really float but having the darker square in to separate them really highlights the square and exactly what the block is if this was the same as this then all these little blues would just float up off of the quilt and you wouldn't actually see um, the block now this is, was made in the um, late 80s, early 90s. So these are fabrics that are from that time period. And it was pretty much uh, in the history of fabric making, the fabrics, um, quilting became really popular after the 76 uh, bicentennial. And by into the 80s, we were getting uh, books and, and teachers and patterns, and quilting was really taking a surge. So by the late 80s, early 90s, there was a few fabric companies out there that were starting to make fabric that was not just 100% cotton calicos, but fabric that was made specifically for quilting. And so some of these fabrics are those. And they, the manufacturers were... Um, let me say new to the idea of keeping the colors color fast so that they would last over time. When you think about garments, you're not going to wear a garment for 20 or 30 years, so you don't really care if the colors fade with use or fade with um, time. So fabrics from that time period still had complications with them that we don't deal with now in 
this 21st century. Fabrics really started changing towards the end of the 90s and into the very beginning of the 2000s if you have fabric from that. And it's a part of what I call the replica, um, reputable fabric companies. Their fabrics will be true to color. You won't have dye lossage um, when you try to wash it. It won't bleed off onto others. So I still have some old fabric in my stash. In fact, I still have quite a bit of what I call the old fabric, which is pre-1990. And I'm very cautious when I use it because I know that it still has those characteristics that are flaws and that can affect your quilt. And there's a couple of quilts in this stack here that have some of those in it. So let's look down here at some of these fabrics that have faded. And it's not because of any sunlight or any light. It's just because the fabric was aging and it wasn't um, as color fast as it should be. You'll notice that this little print right here, every time it shows up in a quilt, and I definitely know this is from 1991, um, you can see how all of those little colors start to um, fade away. Now this one right here is a different fabric company. It's not the same fabric company as this one. And, you know, I just want to say that fabric companies have learned a lot over the years, um, as well as us quilters. And um, we have been demanding different things. Now, I want you to look at this one. This one doesn't have anything to do with um, any damage on the quilt. It's just that these parts started to fade for whatever reason. And this was a different fabric company. This was the same fabric as this. You can see it in this block right through here where it just separated out and there's no rhyme or reason to why it did it except it was just a part of the aging process of that fabric and the way that it was manufactured at that time okay do we have a question um what are your favorite size of checks <laughs> My favorite size of checks, oh, I like any check from a little micro mini check, which is very hard for a fabric production because when the, the design is printed on a, on a roll or on a wheel um, so that it can print and go across the fabric, a little tiny micro mini check will lots of the, most of the time turn out as a dot. And so it's hard to go very, very small. There's a lot of flaws in the, the fabric um, and so a lot of it has to be discarded, so it's very hard to make and expensive to make. So if you don't have a really good meal that knows what they're doing, it's very difficult to make a tiny, tiny micro check. Um, so um, a lot of the checks that you're going to find are a fourth of an inch up to an inch or two inches, which get more into the larger buffalo check. I love a check. Um, probably the smaller to medium are my favorites, but I love a, a check of any kind. And um, don't be afraid to work with them. And when you go in and you look at my fabrics and you go online and look at um, what I design and make and sell and what I put in my quilts, I use a lot of checks in my quilts. I really like them and what they do. Another question? Okay, this little quilt down here is probably from the late 70s maybe as early as 80 or 81, but I don't think so. Um, a lot of these fabrics, I can remember them. These were some of the very first fabrics I bought for quilting that I did not go into my stash. And this was at the time when everything was hand quilted. Now my hand quilting on here is superb. I was always a great hand quilter. These are tiny, tiny. Uh, they would always say if you could get 12 inches uh, 12 stitches per inch, then, you know, it was considered, a, um, I'm going to say master, a master quilting, and I could uh, get um, up to 14 inches an inch. I used a very small needle with a very small eye. Um, when I hand quilt now, I don't use one that small, and it does affect the size um, of your stitches. In fact, um, this has got a green back on it. You can even tell by looking at this one that the batting is different, the fabrics are different. This this is really old. This is really um, pre, I'm going to say pre-quilting, um, uh, when everybody was just getting started and learning, and we didn't have things that were exactly for quilters. So I don't know if, how close the camera can come down in here, um, but it's some, some very small 
quilting and like I said everything was hand quilted we didn't um, or tied you didn't get to do machine quilting till um, I'm gonna say just like early 90s is when you really maybe maybe late 80s um, but machine quilting was not in fact I remember being at the Houston quilt festival the first year that a machine quilted quilt won the overall big prize and you would have thought that the earth had stopped spinning because a machine quilted quilt won so it was really a big deal for machine quilting to come into the quilt world and it it had to really hold its own to get to the point to where it's at today now in this one this is actually a bear paw but just like the one that i showed but because these two colors here are different than the paws, it makes it more like a little bud, like a little rosebud. And then instead of a solid square, a solid square in here, we have a four patch unit. And the block is put on point, which was always harder um, to do. And you can tell um, even from the batting in here that it's different batting than what we use today. It's more lumpy. All right, this one here is from our reference book one. And the reference book one, if you don't have it, this is, I highly recommend that you get the reference book. It has charts in it. It has the first 17 options. This is the one that deals with the square. So that means that it tells you everything you need to know. It's your reference book for the basic square, meaning square in the middle, strips on the side, and then the different options, which are the first 17 options that you trim from that so it's going to have your options and then it has your charts so that you can go in and do your own thing and make your own sizing um, it seems like every class I teach I refer back to a page in this book to go back in and look at this chart look at that chart and then we've also given you multiple sizes of blocks so if you like the quilt but you want to make it in a different size then we have over 50 sizes in here for you for the project. So highly recommend the um, Square and Square reference book. And we'll refer back to that one a lot. Now this one is called um, Moody Blues and we use half square triangles. And so this was all just done scrappy. So that means that the background was kept consistent in the center and the strips that we put on the side was just any blue. So any of these blues, a stripe, a star, a little print, a check, a little Columbia blue, just any a little uh, blue print, just any blue. And then the ways, the different ways that you turn them. So the bottom row would have the darker color coming out in the points and going up here to make the star. And then this was the pinwheels from the half square triangles. And when you use the dark in the corner and it goes out, it creates a little bit of a uh, circle look or octagon shape and this one's moody blue and this one is hand quilted and it's with the pearl cotton so it's a pearl cotton eight and it's just cross hatched and there you can see it on the back and I like to do this when I'm wanting more of a primitive look with the, the, the quilting and I want to hand quilt it <clears throat> but I don't want all that time put into it like for regular <clears throat> all right so this is uh, the same pattern as the blue one it's just done with scrappy it's done smaller so this is one basic square and you're going to get four units out of that and see how you have four units one two three four so four of these will make one block you can sew those up and trim them in about 15 minutes. So in an hour, you're going to have all of these pieces made that are the star that go on the inside. So since you get four of these out of one of these, you're going to do one in black for here. And notice how I kept that consistent in all four of the quilts, in all four of the blocks. So I did four basic squares all in the black and they were my corners. And then I did two, uh, looks like three basic squares in the green. So one went here with the four and one went here and one went here. So I did three in the green 
And in the gold, I did the three, one in for here, one for the points, and one here, the brown and the red. So not very many options do you need to make to make this cute little quilt. And this one was hand quilted and just cross hatched in there. You can see the check on the back. Now this one is in the reference book also, and it's called Shirt Tails. And it's um, this um, shape right here is an option 10. So let me show you the option 10. So there, that triangle shape. So you can see the one, two, three, four triangles. So by starting out with my square, and sewing around it one time, I get this. And then if I take it and sew around it a third time and then slice it up, then I'm uh, the last time I sew around, I get these. So I get all four of these out of one square by sewing around it one time, trimming it, two time, trimming it. I get these shapes. So here is the, the little block. And this is just kind of like a nine patch in the middle and then the option 10 put on the sides. And this little small quilt I really like. It just has a good feel to it. I actually use it a lot um, on my table as a table covering. So lots of times people are like, well, what do you do with all of the quilts? I have hundreds and hundreds of quilts. I don't even know how many I have, but hundreds and hundreds from little small ones up to the big king size quilts. And I use them in displays all over the house. I also have some that are actually used, meaning it may get um, a teacup set on it or a dinner plate set on it. This one goes on my little breakfast table and is there a lot. Now this one here is option 14. So let's look at the option 14. This, is, this one is actually called Christmas Star because it's red and green. And this is an option 14. So this unit right here is an option 14. So you can see how you have one, two, three, four, five triangles in there. And when I start with one square and I sew, so this would be my square in the middle and I would sew around it one time. This white would be here and trim it. And then I would sew around it again with my red and trim it. And then I would sew around it again with my light and trim it. So that means my center square, sew around it one time, sew around it two times, sew around it three times. I get this unit right here, the option 14. And I'm going to get four of those. So I'm going to get this one and this one and this one and this one. So if I do two in red and sew around it three times, I get all of this. And if I do four in the green, I get all of the outside edge. So you can put anything in the middle. So this one here is a little bit of the process of making your option 14. So you can see how this was my square in the middle. I trimmed it like I did for my half square triangles, which means I did the two step on all four corners. So that means when you come back in here and sew it around it again for the next time, see this blunted edge in here? That's good, that's what you want because you're creating this little blunt edge right here is your seam allowance right here that you're creating when you get it into its final stage because you'll need a fourth of an inch seam going all the way around it so you need those points to be kind of backed off inside here. So this time when I sew around it, I leave the fourth of an inch. So you can see here this red, you can see how this um, was in there just like that. And you can see how this fourth of an inch is what you need so that when you sew around it this next time with the red, your point is exactly where you need it to be. Now because you two-stepped here, you're gonna two-step here because look how you're cutting through those and you need those points to be the same. So let's flip over here on the back. So here you can see, so here you can see the option 14, just like that. And all we did is just kind of turn them like a pinwheel and look at that beautiful block, just like that, just from this option 14. I love 14. 
Oh, and the borders that you can do with it. I mean, just great flip-flop borders. And it looks like you've gone to a lot of trouble to create all this piecing, but you really, you really haven't. So here um, are the option 14. So think about putting something in the middle, whether it's a wool applique, maybe even putting buttons here, and you can do a different wool applique and button it on. Um, for the different seasons, so do a spring, a summer, a winter, fall, whatever, in the middle. And you can change it out if you, you know, had it hanging on the wall. But look at this one. This one is very similar. Uh, but look how it used an applique in the middle. And then use some uh, extravagant half square triangle points and blocks to go around on the outside edge. This one is not my pattern, so I can't refer you to wherever this one is. But it's very easy to do with mine and then just put any design in the middle that you want. And this one I use as a table topper. So now this one is called um, Mississippi Memories and the block is put on point. Notice the darker setting squares. And then it has a two just simple strip border. And this one is made um, from the Maley Women book. The Maley Women book has 34 patterns in it. And it is a great book with lots of beautiful quilts in here. And there's a couple more, I think, that are in the Maley book that you'll get to see today. So inside, let's maybe dissect the block a little bit. So here's your block. So this right here is a flying goose. It maybe doesn't look like a flying goose because it, it has the dark in the center, but see how you have your large triangle, which is the body of the goose, and then the wings, which are the smaller triangles on the side. And this one, we just put the red in the middle and use the light on the strips so you can reverse your colors, do whatever you want. So you can see those flying geese in here, and then, then here is just the normal little star with flying geese. And then in these corners, this is option 39. We call it the trumpet block. And um, we're going to be doing some teaching in the premium club with the trumpet block here very soon. For those of you that don't know, we have a teaching website that is a paid subscription and it is called the premium club. And there's probably lots of members of the premium club watching today. And in the premium club, it's a special website that you get access to. There's hundreds of hours of videos in there. We've been doing the Premium Club for over five years, and normally in the, the, the spring semester, like January to May, just think of it as like a school calendar. We have a certain project that we work on, and then in the fall, we have a certain project that we work on, and then in the summer, we have certain projects that we work on. So you can, um, um, I guess I shouldn't say projects that you work on, different teachings. You don't have to make the project, obviously, but you can buy a kit or you can use your stash or you can just watch and learn. But the whole system of how we do the square and a square system, how we do the pattern adapting, how you can adapt any pattern over to it, and all of the different tips and techniques that you learn from colors to um, um, doing what we call overcutting and the science of patchwork and how important pressing is, we cover all of those things in all of the different classes that we teach. For example, right now, we started in January a border series. So not only are you getting to see all of these different piece borders that we do each week in class, but you're also learning more about the options and you're learning more about the technique and how to read and use the charts in the reference book because that book is so jam packed with everything that you need. So many times what you need to build a quilt is there and it's on a certain page, but you don't really know because you haven't gone through and looked at the book or memorized the book or, or used the chart before or taken the time to read it to see how that it works. So this class lesson, this semester, this spring semester of 2022 with the borders is one that I highly recommend for anybody who is wanting to learn about borders, but is also wanting to learn the square and a square system in depth and how to use all of those charts in your book. And so I highly recommend that you go in and do it. You can buy the classes individually or the semester individually, or if you become a premium member, then all of those things are in the premium member portal. And you can go in and of course, watch them as many times as you want 
and for as long as you want, as long as you're a member, just like with any subscription, like with a Netflix or whatever, there is either a monthly or a yearly fee to go in and to do all that. So the option 39 is something that uh, we're going to be doing in the Premium Club, possibly this summer. Um, I'm toying with that a little bit this summer, but coming up soon. Last fall, we worked on diamonds and we, we, taught, we, just, we take individual quilts and teach all of the different things that you need to learn from there. But it's not just, um, probably for those of you that don't know Square in a Square or don't know about Premium Club, it's not just about the project. It's about learning the system, about improving your skills. Um, I love it when I get emails like this. It says, I've been quilting for 30 years and I've learned more in the six months that I've been a Premium Club member that I have in all of those 30 years. So that, um, reference that email that came in probably sums it up um, pretty much is the you want to up your game become a better piecer actually figure out the human element and how you can improve on your piecing and your skills is uh, really exciting to do that and that is something that we we do and teach and have fun with in the premium club now we also are going to have uh, there's two special things that we do um, um, within our business or within our teaching is we do a retreat in the spring and this year is our first year for the retreat and we are calling it our Mother's Day retreat. It's from May 4th which is a Wednesday to I think the 8th which is a Sunday and so Wednesday we come in we sew um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday all day so you get three big long days all of our food. It's a brand new retreat center that's here in uh, North Texas. It's easy to come in if you're flying, you can fly into the airport. Now you work on any square and a square project you want. You can either bring something that you've got or you can purchase one of our kits. You can look on the website and do that. Uh, if you have projects that you want to adapt over to the square and a square system, you can bring those. There'll be me plus three other square and a square teachers there and we'll be there to help you with the project that you want to work on and to help teach you learn more about the square in a square system. So of course we've got um, some games. Um, there'll be uh, little mini teachings every day. There'll be lectures every night. So there's a lot of learning that you're going to be doing in there. Plus you're going to have free time to work on the square and a square project of your choice. So I want to invite you. We have just a couple of spots left. Uh, you can go to the website and get information on the uh, Mother's Day retreat. And then in the fall, we do what we call Quilt Club Week. Um, we have done that for the last two years. It's teaching, it's demos, it's lectures, it's three days plus the early bird the day before and the bonus day at the end. And that is um, our permanent date for that is the first week of October. So make sure that you're a part of that. Now, of course, if you're a Premium Club member, then Quilt Club Week is automatically in your portal for you as a Quilt as a premium club member. If you're not a premium club member, then you can purchase just the Quilt Club Week. And you can do that now and go back and watch the first two that we've had. Um, and um, then as we get closer to October, then we'll tell you about the new one. But those are the um, two big projects that we do. I used to be on the road all the time, uh, maybe only being home 50 days to 80 days a year. And I'm, I'm obviously, the world has changed and I'm just not um, on the road that much. So the retreat is a great way to come if you want in person and the Quilt Club Week is a great, great way to be a part of what we do and to do all of that online. Any questions from anyone? So. Nope. Okay, let's look at some of these. We've got a couple of quilts here to finish up on and then I've got a couple over here I want to show you. Now this one here is um, starts out with a diamond. So let's Normally you have a square in the middle and you sew around it and trim it up, but here you're going to start out with a diamond in the middle. And you're going to sew around it with the yellow and trim it up, leave the fourth of an inch. Your ruler has um, other angles on here. It has a 60. Let me get it to where there's not a glare on it. Well, let's go back to this camera over here. Okay, so there's a 90 on it that we use with the square. There's a 60 and the 120 on it that we use with the diamond shapes. And um, you just lay there on the ruler on there and trim it up just like you do it with the square. So here you can see the first one with the yellow here. 
And then you can see where we went around it the second time with the red and then with the lighter shade here. So these are just squares. This is your options, um, your diamond shape. It's option 21. So you can see how you just get this square and then you sew all of these squares together, all of your big options together and there's your beautiful quilt. And I just love this one. This one's called Pathway to the Stars. It's in your diamond book, which is reference. It's, it's a reference book. It's book two. And um, you can just see all these little yellow pathways that go through the quilt or the little yellow stars. Very, very simple. It's a great one to start with. And uh, just kind of an organized scrap. I love that one. Now, small quilts make great table toppers or table runners. So this one is actually made to be a table runner because you can see the little houses have an up and down version. This way on the end of it, it has your flying goose option three that goes as a border. And there's nothing here in the middle because it's made so that you can put it on your table and then put your napkins and salt and pepper or your flower arrangement or your fruit bowl or whatever here. Um, in the middle and then the repeat of this little um, snow village is over here so I'm gonna turn it where we can see it and actually look at the little snow village now all of these are just little square and square pieces we did not paper piece any of this and you can see how small it is so we've got different trees these are from the diamond shapes we've got different rooftops um, some of these are from the diamond shape we have a little snowman here it may not show out on the camera very well but a little snowman with a little hat so you have like a school and a church and the playground where the kids made the snowman and then the flag um, there so a cute little table topper Now this one is a table runner and it's a normal size block and it's three blocks together. Three blocks together make great um, table toppers. And then just a sashing, just kind of scrapping, scrappy with a little corner square on there. This is great for um, jelly rolls or uh, pre-cuts. And if you, um, sometimes I see people just put a block in the corner and leave the outside edges empty for your table things that you put on and then like the other one I showed you see the one in the middle so if you do a lot of work in the middle think about you know if you put it on a table how that's going to work and this one is in the uh, reference book it's called majestic star and we've used an option one in the middle these big long star points are an 18 and this one here in the corner is a nine, an option nine. And I'm gonna put some of these up here on the back wall. This one is a storm at sea. And in the storm at sea quilt, you have an option seven an option one and those repeat and then in the other row you have an option two meaning that you sew around it twice and the same option seven that is horizontal is now vertical and then we've also used that in the border beautiful quilt This one is called Starflower, and we do have some kits for this one. There's not very many left on it. The quilt is called the Red Crocus or Black Iris. It's 40 by 40. Your backing, your binding, your pattern is all included, and it's $99. And we do have a couple of those kits on the website. And this one is the Option 11 with Flying Geese and um, just a setting square really pretty and because the setting blocks are the same color you can see how these just kind of float you don't really see the block on here you just see the color kind of floating out on there everywhere this one is called weather vane 
and it is made from the option um, 11. So here you can see how this was our square in the center. We sew around it with the strips the first time. We trim leaving the fourth of an inch. We sew around it again with the green. We trim sharp doing the two step because we're cutting through those points. And this is our option 11. So when you look at the block, there you can see an option 11. And we just put a flying goose on the each side of it to make this little star flower shape and then put four of those together to make the weather vane block so really simple really easy beautiful once again you can see the little red check very easy fun block to make This one's out of the reference book one. And once again, it's a very easy block to make. We are not making stars in green and stars in orange. This is all sewn together in rows. So here you can see that diamond shape standing up with a solid square next to it. And here you can see it laying down with a solid square next to it. So this one is very, very easy to do with the option seven, which is this piece right here, diamond in the middle, orange and green. So it's just like this, but instead of a square in the middle, it has the diamond shape in the middle. And you use your ruler to trim it up and you get that whole shape. So it's very clean, very nice, very neat. Seam allowances exactly where you need them to be. This one is Buzzsaw and it, um, if you go to the website, look for the hurricane pattern and the hexi star and the buzz saw. No paper piecing, just, just pieced with the square and a square system. Very easy to do. Okay, the next one up here on the quilt rack is a little sampler. And I just went through all the different books, all the different square and square books. There's uh, like with the four patch ruler, nine patch ruler, mini ruler. There's all different sizes of blocks in all of the different books that come with the rulers and the books and the patterns. And so I just went through and I picked out all the six inch blocks and I made one of them and then put this little sampler together. Really a fun one to do. You can see some of these are ones that we've already looked at. And this one comes with the, in the book with the nine patch. So all of these are just nice small quilts. Now you might, when you look at this, um, see a nine patch and four triangles put together. But this is the option. Instead of having a plain square in the middle, like we started with, we just put a nine patch in the middle, surrounded it with our strips, and every time you have a strip, you're gonna get that triangle shape. So these triangles were the strips that you sew around the nine patch. And then you just sew those in rows. So normally that would be a quilt that would be pretty time to make. This quilt is so soft. Oh, and I also want you to notice that, notice how we just, in the corner, we just used one of those nine patches for uh, the border. We didn't have to go in and piece a whole border because there's a lot going on inside here. So you don't necessarily have to go out here and put a lot of uh, piecing in a border, but you can just take one of your little blocks and put it in the corner and it looks like you've done spe something special. This little quilt has been washed several times. It is so soft and cozy. It would be perfect um, in size and weight and everything for um, a baby or a little toddler quilt. Uh, these are the option ones here. These are the option sevens and those are all in a row. And then you can see that seven going vertical with a, a double four patch. 
so a 16 patch, and you do get some motion and movement. Anytime you work with these diamond shapes, you're gonna get some circles and some motion and some movement. This is actually the same setup that you would use with the Storm at Sea. The Storm at Sea is an option one with an option seven going horizontal, and it has the vertical diamond, and the other one had the option two in here that is a Storm at Sea. So this setup of a square, a rectangle, and a bigger square is used in a lot of designs and patterns. And especially around um, Valentine's Day last month in February, I saw a lot of quilts on different Facebook pages where they had made hearts with the same shape, with the same Storm at Sea pattern and design. So this is the last quilt I have to show in our small quilt lecture it is all it's a wool applique now the wool applique is really a lot of fun to do because you just cut the shape out the size you want it you don't have to turn anything under and then you go back in and stitch around it with the pearl cottons and you get the beautiful look of the applique it's got some depth and texture to it because of what the wool brings um, to the quilt to the party and then this one was hand quilted in the pearl cotton uh, we did a um, sashing on it that uh, with that little block that was really pretty special and the little black cornerstones and it just turned into a really pretty little quilt. I actually made this quilt to go over the fireplace of our house back about 20 years ago and um, it was over the fireplace for a long time and we moved and the quilt hung in our bedroom and now I've done a little bit of different things in there and so it's uh, now moved to a stack of quilts so uh, it's still on display the way that it's folded and it's put in my office you can still see it and enjoy it so that is um, all of the quilts that I have to show you today in the small quilt lecture I hope you really enjoyed it now remember you can also go over to um, the webinars in our website uh, if you sign up with your um, email address um, for the newsletter and for the webinars, you can go in there and you can watch uh, the past webinars that we've done from uh, 2021 and then um, this year, 2022. So do we have any questions from anybody no, but, <coughs> before we wrap it they up? They should just go to the top of the website and sign up on our uh, email list. Okay, so go to, the easiest way to do it. go to our website, squareinasquare.com. At the top of the very first page, the home page there, there's a little slot that you can just sign up with your email. And then, um, right then, does it give you access to the webinars? Or? No. Uh, they they would have got that with an email if they were on our okay, email Okay, if you're list. already on our email list, yeah. then that was in your email. And right. you can go in there and watch the other ones. Yep. But if you're new, then you need to go in there and put your email in there and then get started. Yep. Okay, so don't forget, um, in the fall, our Quilt Club Week, that we're going to have the first week of October. And we'll give you information for signing up on that. And if you're on our email list, then you'll get all of these notifications for everything that we're doing. And then our Mother's Day Retreat, come join us. We've got a couple of spots left in there. It'll be great fun and a great learning opportunity for you. And I really feel like that it is, it's, we're going to have a great time because I really feel like that it's it's a safe time to be together and to travel and um, we don't have to have all of that hanging around in the back of our mind of being worrisome about our environment and where we're at and um, then also make sure that you're signed up with their email so that you get notifications um, about our free webinars like this that we do so and oh we also have a, a quilting hotline text number it's 817 713-2879 and that's um, it's it, when you send me a picture or ask a question it's just your phone number on there so if it's important for me to have your email or name make sure you put that in there and if it's not and you just have a question then that's great I really love for you to text me questions about the quilts because it's fun to do and I, and I know you're learning and and um, and doing the square in a square but the thing about doing it on that text number is if I need to make a little video and send it back to you to explain what you wanted or what you needed, then I do that. And it's very simple, easy, and quick to do that. So I can just go right there and send you an email. Question on how do I watch this again? How do I watch this again? Because you've okay. got, had a lot of information. So for now, they can watch it, like if they're on YouTube or Facebook, it mm -hmm. will stay there but it also become part of the webinar 
mm -hmm. section as well. So since this is one of our free webinars, it stays in the Facebook page. Of course, eventually it gets, you know, scrolled away. Um, and then on YouTube, um, it'll be there. And then it'll also be in our webinar section that if you go in and sign up with your email, then you can watch it in there and it won't get lost. Sometimes in the Facebook feeds and in the well, YouTube as world, goes on, yeah, as time goes on, they get pushed back and they're harder to find. So if you sign up with your email, then it's, you don't have to mess with all that other, just go straight to it and start watching. And the more you watch, the more you're going to learn. I always say that learning the score and the score system helps move you up the quilting ladder of success. It helps you become the piecer you've always dreamed about. It helps you make quilts. It gives you skills that you would have shied away from and never made before. And I love it when my little five-year-old niece came to me many years ago, almost 20 years ago now, and she has a pinwheel in her hand. It's hot from the iron, and she's kind of holding it like a hot potato, and she's just got her eyes glued to it. As she's walking over to where I'm working, she's not even looking at me. She's looking at her little pinwheel in her hand, and she says, Mimi, look. I've got perfect points. It still just uh, gives me chills because I know that you can do that too. And we're here to help you improve upon your piecing and your quilting skills. Border class tomorrow for premium? Premium club members, we have a border class tomorrow, option nine. We'll see you there. And you guys, if you're not a part of the border class, you can go into the website and sign up. Um, the, the, I think class tomorrow is number eight class. And you, the ones that we've already done, you can go back in and, and binge watch those or watch those individually. And then you can watch our class live. And as each week as we add another one, then uh, you can just keep, keep on learning. Okay? So um, email us, Jody at squareinasquare.com. Go to our website and look around and text me if you have any quilting questions. We're here to help. We're all about education and helping you become the piecer that you've always dreamed of. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.